Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter along with Michael Fairchild behind the camera from your Purdue Alumni Association. Today we're uh, on campus. We're in front of the iconic Union Building, opened in 1924, added on to f five separate times. But today we're going to feature the uh, mysterious South Tower, way up at the top of the tower. We're gonna actually go up into the South Tower. Um, a lot of intrigue about that. Maybe you heard about it. Maybe you're not even familiar with it. But it's kind of an interesting place. It's a step back in time as you go into that facility and get a chance to see what's there. You know, we've done quite a few videos from the Union. We've done about a half a dozen featuring different places. Our first time up in the South Tower. So now we're going to walk right up to the front door of the South Tower. Okay, we have arrived up at the South Tower on the second floor, uh, logistically, just to kind of give you some things. Uh, down the hallway is the faculty lounge and uh, the West Tower, which I'll talk about in a second. Actually, behind Michael is the anniversary drawing room. It is still there. Many of you have probably been more there before. In fact, we did a feature on the uh, anniversary draw room, drawing room. These are now offices for the various uh, uh, administrators here in the Union Building. Uh, the West Tower that I mentioned, West Tower is uh, now the home to the Purdue Amateur Radio Club, the Ham Radio Club. It's, uh, the club's actually been around on campus since the early 1900s or so, um, primarily through the electrical engineering students who got interested in that. This is way before public uh, radio, public broadcasting, all those sorts of things. That didn't come around until around 1920, but they were very active in that. They eventually were assigned call signs. Their call sign is W9YB. They got assigned that in 1932. They eventually moved to the West Tower in 1963, and they've been here ever since. It's a uh, very active club. They still have contests. They meet there in a place called the Shack. They call it the Shack with a variety of equipment and have uh, contests and talk to their colleagues uh, around the world on a regular basis. I think they have around two dozen in the club right now, and it's remained active on campus. Uh, but now we are outside the South Tower, here on the second floor of the Union Building, and uh, it's, it's a facility that many maybe have walked by, maybe don't even know it's here, but it's available for students on a regular basis. Uh, but it's rather mysterious. People don't know much about it, but we're gonna kind of uh, give you the inside view of that as we uh, Walk up these steps. I can tell you pretty narrow steps, about 30 all the way up to the top. We'll meet you at the top of the steps. Okay, we are up in the South Tower and take you back to the 1950s as you look around the room. Okay, welcome to the 1950s or so. Uh, the room has been here since the 1920s when it opened, but really was quite active in the 50s. And so in the 1950s, President Fred Hovde uh, is in office. Ray Eddy is the basketball coach. Jack Mullenkoff is actually starting his legendary football coaching career about that time. If you go to the football games as a freshman, you can actually sit in the Block P the colorful card section. Hated to see that go. That lasted until the 70s. At homecoming for round football games, they had beautiful displays outside the housing units. Very creative, very colorful, quite sophisticated towards the end. Folks on, on campus as well as the community really enjoyed actually driving over on campus and, and looking at all the homecoming displays. Uh, that faded around the 19, early 1970s or also when we first came here. We could put the kids in the car and drive around and see the homecoming displays. But the 1950s, so I had, you know, classes being taught, students dressed up somewhat in the 50s or so, uh, you know, still for classes. A um, lot of activities on campus um, back in the 50s. Also wanted to mention at homecoming, uh, gold cords were popular then for seniors. 
And so uh, corduroy pants, corduroy skirts, and on those the students would display their housing unit, their major, their involvements on campus. They would celebrate homecoming. Actually the men would wear a derby, carry a cane as they wore their gold cords. Interestingly enough, in a recent Vogue magazine, the gold cords from Purdue were actually kind of featured as kind of a fashion trend of the Midwest. And who would have ever thought there were the, there were the gold cords. Also at homecoming, kind of a unique thing, they had a beard growing contest. Kind of a fascinating time for the students then, and who would have thought, look where we are today with beards and that sort of thing. Uh, in this particular room, back in that era, uh, the student government used to meet. In fact, we got a great picture of the student government uh, having a meeting. The windows in the background uh, up in this particular facility. One of the more unique events that took place up here was an activity called the penthouse. This was from the 40s and 50s or so, sponsored by the student union board here in the Purdue Memorial Union. And it would be a nightclub basically, Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, they would have tables with tablecloths and candles. The waiters would wear tuxedos and they would serve you Cokes and snacks, no f real food service available. But then they would have shows. They would actually have shows on stage for those who were fortunate enough to attend and they would have shows at 9, 30, and 11, and quite often it would be a, a, a musical uh, act, uh, maybe a vocalist, maybe they'd have a local band come in and, and uh, perform. But again, in the 50s, you know, no visitation in the residence halls, and so going out on a date, that was a special thing for couples, and so it really was a great time on campus with the greatest generation uh, arriving on campus, uh, and this facility, this, this building itself, this room, actually was a, a significant part of, of what was going on back then. But, you know, time moves on, and the building, this room, is still not air conditioned. The accessibility, as you could tell as we walked up here, was, was a little challenging. And so with the uh, ADA, American Disabilities Act, it only has one exit. Pretty soon fire codes came into play. So whereas they used to have maybe 100 people are up here or so, now it's, it's pretty much limited to about uh, 40, 50 people or so, that, that's about it. But it is still available to students. You can check out a key and come up and use this facility. Uh, these days, they tell me it's used for a variety of dance clubs, the salsa dance club, the Latino and ballroom dance clubs, the Filipino Student Association. They have yoga classes up here sometimes. Birthday parties, going away events are all up here in this particular room just because of its uniqueness. Another unique thing actually is there's a piano that stays here. Students are free to come up, check out the key, come up and use the piano, and they do. Interestingly enough, as Michael and I arrived, unbeknownst to us, they actually keep kind of a diary, all the students. All the students who come up and play the piano in between classes really enjoy that and they write each other notes, which is kind of a cool thing, you know, for this particular room. Uh, the piano itself even has its own story, you know, they tune it quite often because it gets quite hot or quite cold up here. But every once in a while they have to change the piano out and bring up a new one. Can you imagine those steps we just came up? getting a piano up here, quite the challenge, I think. Certainly a part of Purdue, and hopefully some of you are familiar with having been up here before, great views out the window of, of campus, very unique views, as a matter of fact. Uh, as you could look down, in the 50s, you would have looked down and you would have seen the reflection pond down there, but you don't do that these days. A unique spot on campus that uh, we hope you've enjoyed, and maybe it took you back to the 50s. We've added some music that should help that. But again, it's the uh, South Tower from the Purdue Memorial Union. Uh, this, this, uh, this session of uh, Tuesday Tour, we hope you enjoyed this blast from the past. Hail Purdue.